So what we have here is we have a beam with a triangular distributed load on one end and a point load on the other. And what we need to do is we need to um, draw our shear and moment diagrams for that. And I've gotten the steps all written out down in the description. You should check that out. And if you do find this helpful, hit that like button and don't forget to subscribe. So the first thing we need to do, like with all shear moment diagrams, is we need to draw a free body diagram to begin with. And so we have our beam here, and we have our triangular distributed load, and draw that kind of accurately. And then we have our point load right here, and our reaction forces at A and B. And this is six kilonewtons, and this is three kilonewtons per meter. And that just kind of means that this triangular, uh, um, triangle of distributed load, this side is three kilonewtons high, kind of, you could say. And this is our reaction force, A sub Y and B sub Y. And we're going to solve for those reaction forces using equilibrium equations. And usually I like to start with a moment equation. So the sum of the moments will sum about A. And that equals zero because it is in equilibrium. So you have your B sub Y force that is causing a counterclockwise rotation. And we'll say that a counterclockwise rotation is positive. So positive b sub y times by its distance away from a which is six meters so times by six and then you have the six kilonewton load is causing clockwise rotation so we will say it's negative six multiplied by its distance which is 7.5 meters away from it and then we have our triangular distributed load it will also cause counterclock or clockwise rotation so we'll say it's negative and then the area under that distributed load curve, not curve, but it's linear, but it will be half the base times the height. So six times by one half is three, times by three is nine. So we have nine kilonewtons under this distributed load and the center of gravity of that load is going to be one third along its length away from the 90 degree curve. So one third along this six meter um, distributed load is two meters. So we'll multiply that by two. And that's really where that distributed load is acting on the beam if we just narrow it down to one point. So we solve for B sub Y and you get that B sub Y equals 10.5 kilonewtons. So now we can sum forces in the Y direction and solve for a sub y. So the sum of the forces in the y direction equals zero. Then you have a sub y and plus b sub y. It's also going in the positive y direction if we're saying up is positive y. And then we have our nine kilonewtons from the distributed load, so minus nine, then minus the six from the point load. And you get the a sub y equals 4.5 kilonewtons. And then we will label that up here and then we will draw our shear and moment um, diagram and axes just right below it so we can line things up and then we'll label that. So we've got our shear and moment axes labeled here. And the first thing we want to do is we want to start with this reaction force that is right at the end of the beam. And so it is going to push our shear diagram up 4.5 kilonewtons. So we'll label it right here, 4.5. Um, it's going to start right there. And then our distributed load is going to bring it down. And the thing about just triangular distributed loads is they're kind of tricky because um, from an engineering standpoint, it makes sense to draw this um, triangle on top of the beam. But from a calculus standpoint, it is actually 
negative area. It is area under the curve, so it would make more sense to draw it like this. But we draw it be like this in engineering because the loads are usually on top of the beams and not hanging from the bottom. But knowing that it's from the bottom like this, we know that it's negative area. Negative area means that it is going to, the shear diagram is going to go down. And the amount it's going to go down is the area under this curve here. And so we already found that this was 9, so we know it's going to drop down 9, so down to 4.5 minus 9 is negative 4.5. So we'll label that here. Um, and that will go all the way to about this point. But because it's a triangle um, shape, we know that this is going to be a parabolic curve on this. It's not going to be linear like this load. If it has a positive slope, it is going to be concave up. And if it has a negative slope, it's going to be concave down. And that's another reason for drawing it like this under the curve is because this looks like a negative slope, but this is actually a positive slope, so our graph is going to be concave up. And we'll just draw that right here. So it'll look something like that. Now we need to find this point right here where it crosses the axis because that point where the shear goes to zero is going to be a maximum on our moment diagram. And the way we can do that, probably most easily, is to find our loading function. And so we're going to draw this triangle once again to remind us what this um, curve looks like. We're going to call the loading function w. It's a function of x. We'll say that the x distance starts at um, a is 0 along the thing. And that equals, um, we need to find our slope. We know it starts here at 3 and goes to 0 in 6 meters. So rise over run, it's going 3 meters or 3 kilonewtons in 6 meters, which is 1 half. So our slope is 1 half x. And it's positive because this is a positive slope here. And so we have 1 half x. It starts down here at negative 3, so it's going to be minus 3. And just to check that, if we plug in 0 here, we get that this is negative 3. When we plug in 6 here, we get that this is 0. So our, this is our loading function. Um, now to find our shear function, it is just going to be the integral of our loading function. So integrate this and we get 1 fourth x squared minus 3x. And our boundary conditions is that our shear function starts at 4.5, positive 4.5. Um, and so it is going to be plus 4.5 here. Um, and then to find where it crosses, we just set this equal to 0 and solve for x. You end up getting that this x equals 1.76 meters. So this is 1.76 meters along the beam which is where our shear function goes to zero where there's no internal shear forces in our beam and that will be once again a positive or a maximum on our moment diagram so now that we found that we can um, continue our b sub y is going to push our graph um, our line up 10.5 kilonewtons, so negative 4.5 plus 10.5 is 6, so it's going to jump all the way up here to 6. Nothing happens between this reaction force and this point load, so it's going to go over, and then the point load is going to push it down 6, which brings it back down to 0, and that kind of tells us we did it right because the end of this beam, um, it's not supported, so it can't support a reaction so it goes down to zero. Um, so that is our shear function, our shear diagram. Next with our moment diagram we know that this is positive area right here and so it is going to go up at the beginning and this is negative area so it's going to start to come back down. The amount that it does that is the area under these curves. But the easiest way to find at what point um, it goes to and what it drops to 
is going to be to integrate our shear function to get our moment function. So m of x equals 1 twelfth x cubed minus 3 halves x squared plus 4.5 x. And then because this is a pin connection right here, the end of this beam cannot support or resist a moment. So it, our moment diagram is going to start at zero. That means the boundary conditions for our moment function is going to be zero. So our plus C here would equal zero. So this is our final moment function. So we can generally just draw this um, to what it is. And then we can solve for our um, the points, the max and mins, once we plug them into the equation. So we know that this is this part of our graph for the shear function has a negative slope. That means our moment function is going to be concave down. Negative slope, concave down. So it's going up on this point from because of this positive area going down in this part because of the negative area and then if we, we know that this max occurs at 1.76 meters along the thing we have our function here plug in 1.76 for x and you get that our moment function at 1.76 meters equals 3.73 kilonewton meters. And so we'll label that here 3.73. Um, we can find where our moment function crosses the axis by setting this equal to zero and solving for x. We end up getting that that x is um, 3.8 meters along the thing, along the beam. And then finally we can plug in 6 for x on here to find to what point it goes to down here. So that is going to end up equaling negative 9. Negative 9 kilonewton meters. So we'll label that here on our graph that this is negative 9. So we've got to this point and now we have the area under the curve here. So we know that this is 6 high and 1.5 meters long. So 6 times 1.5 is positive 9 because this is a positive area. And because this is, it has a slope of 0, our slope here is going to be constant. Um, so it is going to go up. It's going to have a change of 9, and it's going to go up like that. And because we start at negative 9, it's going to go up 9, back to 0, and that's once again an indication that we did it right because this end of the beam cannot support a moment reaction. So that is how you find your shear moment diagrams. I hope you found this helpful. If you did, hit that like button. If you have any questions or suggestions, you can leave them down in the comments. I will respond to them. Um, I've also got the steps and all the tips or the calculus stuff written out in the description. I think that will be super helpful for you. Um, I've also been creating some awesome designs with the student engineering logo like the one on the shirt. If you're interested in buying shirts and hoodies and stuff like this with this brand on them, you can click on the links down in the description. That'll take you to Teespring and Amazon. You can buy this stuff and that helps me out a lot. I've also been doing some engineering projects that are pretty cool. You can check those out. If you're new to my channel, my name is Preston Palmer, student engineering. My goal is to help other engineering students like me better understand engineering. So if you find this helpful, hit that like button and don't forget to subscribe.